biggest issue right now is there's a real decrease in the number of individuals that are coming into the banking industry out of either college or graduate school. Some statistics have uh, the number down almost 30 percent over the last 10 years. So the big issue is getting people into the banks. And once they're in the banks, how do you keep them there? And putting together a sound compensation plan that provides the right kinds of incentives for those individuals to want to stay at the bank is really a challenge for the bank owners and directors. Further complicating the issue is the fact you have multi-generations working in banks now. You have Gen Xers who are looking for one thing, you have uh, uh, millennials who are looking for something different, and you have your baby boomers that are trying to finish with a strong economic uh, position. And it's hard to have one compensation plan that's going to fit all sizes. There has been a shift recently in how banks look at long-term and short-term compensation. And a lot of this shift, I think, stems from comments from regulators that banks need to really focus on management succession. So the management succession, what the regulators have been saying, is you can't just focus on your top two, three key people. And what else is the bank doing to try to really incent and retain and develop some of the next layer of management or your future leaders? Another challenge is once you even get these key people, what, what kind of retention plan, incentive plan do you want to put in place for these people in order to keep them? You know, depending on the age of the participant, your key executive, that they may have more of an interest in retirement planning, they may have more of an interest of rising costs of college education for their children, or maybe just even cash in hand. So the challenge is trying to tailor a plan that accomplishes the bank's objectives, but also the objectives of the key executive, so that you have a win-win situation, yet also not making these plans so complicated that they're hard to understand and very difficult to administer. Bank-owned life insurance is a critical component for most banks' executive compensation strategy. Once a bank has decided what it wants to do from an executive benefits perspective, the analysis shifts to BOLI and whether BOLI is a desired asset for the bank. Essentially, the appeal of BOLI is that it, the bank is able to get tax advantage yield that's 100 basis points to 200 basis points plus better than what the bank can get on other alternative bank investments. Um, that incremental yield that the bank gets helps to offset the cost of implementing and putting in these incentive and retention plans for key executives. When a bank feels that it needs to make a separate decision of adding some kind of an executive deferred compensation plan to their program, they are going to have a new expense or accrual that they have to recognize for that new program. And when a bank invests in bank-owned life insurance, they're looking to get a better return on the earning standpoint over other bank investments. That extra incremental earnings that the bully brings to the table is what the bank can use to offset that new expense of the new deferred compensation program. In addition, the tax-free death benefits that bully provides ultimately to the bank can help fund existing employee benefit expenses, the costs of the executive compensation plans that are put in place, and also to provide pre- and post-retirement death benefits for the key executives.